this game, we had a goal and all these uh, game of touch football. There were some sights, believe you me, and this is one of the all-time greats. Les John showing his skills at soccer here and able to dive over for a try. It was a fun game. Everybody enjoyed it. But let's get back now to the real thing as Les John he has recovered, believe me. He's back okay. And we're back for the real thing. The kickoff in this grand final replay. Referee Annesley checks both sides. And we're set for a start. Underway. State Bank big game. Balmain and Canterbury. Sun shining brightly here. The ground, as you can see there, a little heavy in patches, particularly down near the goal lines. But otherwise, the ground is holding up pretty well. Now, Elia comes away with the football, just 15 metres out from the Canterbury Banks down line. And the penalty's been given to Balmain. That was a really dumb penalty, I thought. Uh, uh, unless I've got rocks in my head, there was somebody directly in front of him. Uh, he's an international footballer. Uh, really, that is one of the dumbest penalties you'll ever see given. Yeah, Mark Ely, the offender. Tim Brasher was certainly standing right in front of him. David Brooks in the side and uh, automatically assumed the goal-kicking duties. Well, I just hope for Canterbury's sake today that I don't like to see a good side uh, continually getting beaten. This is my own side of Manly, but... Uh, I, I believe that Canterbury have got to play more attacking football. I think they've been running at the opponents, just showing how tough they are on the forwards, and I think it's just rebounded on them. They've met as equally a tough attack as they've got in some of the games, and they're just not firing. They've got to start moving the ball around. It's just not so long ago they were known as the entertainers. Doing a little of that. I agree with that. I think that they, uh, at times, are very boring football team to watch. Now, David Brooks, first shot at goal. He's kicked 17 goals in 89, and this is uh, not going to add to his tally. Pushed away. So, no score in this Canterbury-Balmain clash. Andrew Farrow with the restart for the Bulldogs. Hardwick tried to trap it. Down for Gary Jack. Interested to see how he performs today with a state of origin side being picked tonight. Many believe he only has to stay on his feet and get through this game okay to be in the team. Now Podgy wrestled to the ground. That's the halfway mark. The ball went behind him. Picked up by O'Brien. And again the penalty. This I get to Balmain. Inside the five metres Canterbury this time. So very early in this match, two penalties to the Tigers. And again, Brooks has elected to kick for goal. Well, it's been a pretty soft start for Balmain. They've only had to go through the motions, and they've got a couple of penalties in the opening two minutes, both within kicking range. The first one was missed. This is giving Brooks another opportunity from a more uh, distant position, but it's still a very kickable goal. It'll give them a good start, a good... Uh, idea of how they're going in this match so they can get really pumped up about a goal at this stage. Just with his first shot, David Brooks, this one is about 10 metres inside Canterbury's half. Balmain have only had to hold the ball for two tackles to get two penalties. So David Brooks, a fairly long range kick. Puts it in the air, the distance is going to be okay, and the direction is fine too, right between the posts. So Brooks hits the lead with Balmain, it's 2-0 over Canterbury. Look at these lower grades, they were uh, both interesting games. The uh, President's Cup under 21s, Canterbury 22, Balmain 6, that was a clear-cut win. And the reserve grade, Balmain 20, Canterbury 18. They came with a wallop in the second half and it looked good there for a while. But anyway, that was the result. Bulldogs, just 10 from the, half, uh, from the halfway mark. Here's Terry Lamb. Certainly moving as well as he did yesterday in the rep games. Understand that he uh, hasn't been well over the past few weeks, Lamb. Lacking in iron. Now that's a fine kick from Langmack. Positioned himself beautifully and was able to find touch. Yes, indeed. Uh, 
a lot of footballers around Sydney at the moment have got viruses and uh, most of them are, are those with the virus have been treating with uh, antibiotics which is not all that conducive to continuing good hard training. I understand that Terry Lamb in fact has had to have injections of iron and uh, he's only just starting to feel pretty good again. So the Tigers, 30 metres out as Hardwick brings the ball up, walked by Ellis. Also Brandon Lee. Now Edwards. He's having to offload to Clark. Oh gee, that's a terrible play. Elias finally got to it. His kick is... Oh gee, well I don't know what this was thinking of, did he? Well, maybe he thought he was closer to the touchline. I think that's it. You know, I think he was disorientated and looking up in the air all the time. Suddenly realised there was a line somewhere there and had to have a look down for it. Worked out okay for him, and uh, Canterbury have come up with a penalty. So Farrah will uh, kick the touch. Well, I think it's true to say um, that we've seen more football from Canterbury in the opening 15 minutes of this match than we've seen in three or four other matches, full matches. They've attempted to do something. Might have that ball was just nicely caught by Bill Anderson on the sideline. Well played, Bill. Robin Thorne, five metres inside the Balmain half. Now he's Langback. Running off him was Gillespie. He's running with plenty of enthusiasm today. And got the pass away to Terry Lamb. Lamb's going for the corner. Jack's getting to him, but he beats Jack and scores. Great try from Terry Lamb and put that down to David Gillespie. Yes, that must have been a transfer of the pass there from... Uh, Gillespie to Lamb that gave uh, Annesley a fraction of second to look at. It was very close to being offside, I thought. There comes Lamb. No, we'll say that that was dead right. It was dead in line. Then the very strong sprint from Lamb. Now, I'm a little bit surprised that Jack was pushed away there at the end of that. Maybe the, uh, the arm that he had broken, that he's come back, and uh, it's just given him a little bit of a... Well, the more you look at that pass from head on, it looked dead blind ball. But here's Jack. I would have thought he would have gone in and got him. But the handoff for the left hand pushed him away. Now, that's something that the selectors will be very aware of. His form today, they'll be watching it. And that will not be a... Uh, that will be of concern to the New South Wales selectors. Now, here's Terry Lamb right on the touchline. Attempted conversion of his own try. Watch this with us. He's just pushed it to the side. But uh, the Bulldogs have the lead over Balmain, 4-2. to two. <laughs> Young Tim Brasher with the restart for Balmain. Thomas tried to get there. <laughs> Farrell was there backing up just as well. It's like a bit bike play. Lee. Three defenders to push him back. But we've commented over the past few weeks about Canterbury's ability to switch um, Alchin and Thomas at dummy half. Which do you prefer? I think they're much better with Thomas at dummy half and Alchin first receiver. You see, if you're buried at dummy half, you can't see much of the play. But as first receiver, you've got much better field vision. And I think the added bonus for Canterbury is it allows Paul Langmack not to have to organise anything. He can become the second option. You can see that he was the one that fired that pass on to Gillespie. He read that particularly well. They are better with Alchin one off the ruck and Langmack a second option. Very solid hit on Gary Jack. But he's OK. There's no big pardons with that tackle from Raymond. Now Brash has played it. <laughs> and again, Raymond <laughs> very quickly in there on O'Brien. Yes. Oh, gee whiz, there's some solid contact out there. That was Gillespie on Pierce. That's Gillespie again. He's really enjoying himself today, let me tell you. This one was high and it was uh, a mean, mean tackle, that one. He didn't get a, a shot from the referee about it, but uh, no, he had a good look at it. Well, the penalty's been given against Balmain. Uh, up offside in that scrum, so it's a differential penalty to Canterbury. Well, Terry Lamb's complaining because he was off of what he thought was another truck to score another try. And now the team's been given a penalty. That's always a very uh, nasty thing for a football team. The referee's got a rule on what he sees, of course. So, a foul touch, and again the Tigers under pressure as Canterbury try to string some good work together. Robin Thorne, caught by Elias, put down just 10 metres out from the Balmain line. 
Thomas again, dummy half. Here's the Lamb. Linking up with Dunn. Just eight metres out now, the Bulldogs. Working away on this blind side as Alchin takes the first pass. Nowhere to go. Lamb again. A little kick ahead for his outside backs, but Gartner's going to beat them all too. Oh! he had any downward pressure on the ball I'm convinced that he missed it very nearly completely he may have just touched it but I doubt it there's the little grubber kick put through by Lamb we're watch very carefully now as Gartner comes in after the ball he's trying to make it uh, dead he goes in and no he doesn't get a downward pressure the ball bobbled off his hands and a liar has scored a legitimate and uh, good try from following up here's the kick again from side on a good grubber kick into the end goal now Lamb has deduced that the long grass on there's not going to let the ball roll very far. Gartner really makes a terrible meal of that, proving only uh, conclusively if it ever needed to be proved that even the old guys, the experienced ones, can make terrible blunders. Now here's Lamb with the conversion attempt. Oh, this is a great kick. Oh, beautiful kick, Joey Lamb. Oh, this is, looks like it might be the Bulldogs' day. It's now 10 to 2, Canterbury over Balmain. times during the first half but the quality of the competition leaders attack was too good for one star to stop time. Time for South. mark lyons got a great ball away to blake late in the first half and the rabbitohs led 12-2 at the break in the second half wests were a much more organized outfit hanley perfectly at home in the centers Leading 14-6, Souths lost Steve Maven after an incident which left Trevor Cogger in the hands of the trainers. Kelvin Skerritt and Mark Lyons exchanged punches as the final siren went, but it finished with handshakes all around. The Magpies happy that only nine points separated them and the Premiership leaders. Down south, the English influence at least worked for Illawarra as they scored their first Premiership win of the year over Manly. Andy Gregory and Steve Hampson arrived from Wigan during the week. The Steelers scored three tries to two after leading 12-8 at the break. For this high tackle on docking. The Sharks then took full advantage of the extra man, scoring virtually at will. The Knights were on, but nobody was home as Cronulla fell. Hutchin crawling on his hands and knees to the 10 metre mark. Canterbury Banks down running with the aid of quite a strong breeze. It's picked up a fair bit from the south, but their kicking game's been particularly good in this game. The, the Belmore service is a strange one. It's quite sandy in the middle, but it, there's a, a fair bit of mud still on the edges. That's where they've been putting the ball in the main, and they've been able to pin Belmain down. Now a beautiful pass from Gary Jack. Out for O'Brien. They're on the Canterbury quarter line now, so the Tigers may be able to string something together themselves. Out along the back line is Wayne Pierce is out there. The pass has been picked up, but it wasn't a great one. It was just in front of Podgy. He had to bend down to pick it up. Now Pierce again, a dummy half. Well, back for Gartner. Gartner with some room to move. Gorn's got him. Elias this time is dummy half. Back for Edwards. Penalty's got a Valmain. Canterbury offside. One, two, three, says Annesley, and pointed to three Canterbury forwards, all of whom were well and truly up offside. Grant Ellis done, and uh, I think David Gillespie was the third one. Got a Valmain player down receiving attention. It's Podgy. Back near the quarter line. He seems to be okay. Perspiration just falling off Brooks as he steadies himself. Picture of concentration pushes this one to the right so no goal and the score remains at 10-2 Canterbury over Balmain and a restart from the 22 Andrew Farrah his drop kick down for Sirenen first man there to him I think was uh, was done couldn't quite hold Sirenen Here's a further penalty to Balmain. Yes, he's got the, uh, I think it's Grant Ellis there for uh, deliberately lying down with the dummy half is trying to work and uh, field the ball in that area. 
mind you, that's a ploy that a lot of coaches instruct their players to use in games to be as slow as possible away from the dummy half area. And periodically, the referees do uh, go on with it, but he's been brought up to the head bin, obviously. Yeah, Grant Ellis, Murray Britton helping him off, immediately called for the head bin. And uh, the man coming on to replace him is a local hero, the skipper of the Canterbury side, Tunks, who uh, was put on the bench because of his commitments yesterday may be quite effective if he can be used in a 10 minute spurt here here's Gillespie now here's Tunks Sheridan moved up to meet him and took him Alchin to Dunn and Dunn Serves the pass up to Gillespie, keeps it alive with a pass back to Dunn. Dunn's given it back to Alchin. Alchin, desperation stuck, gives it back to Brandon Lee. He's pulled out, and that's a six tackle, and that'll be a turnover. What great stuff from Canterbury. Yes, first class rugby league that they've come back to form with a vengeance. I'm delighted. I was critical of them earlier, but I'm delighted with the way they're carrying on now. They're really playing attractive rugby league as well as good rugby league. And it's rebounding in their favour. Everything they're doing at the moment looks good. Here's uh, Gary Jack from the State Bank replay getting a little bit of a work out there by a couple of defenders. You can see all the padding he's got in his right arm. That was because he broke that right forearm earlier this year. Now Clark playing it 12 metres out from his own line. Surinam running strongly got under a high tackle from Tunks. Now it's come back for Sean Edwards. Leaders out from the Balmain line. Elias has to pressure. Oh, welcome to first grade, son. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> That'll be something to tell the kids at school tomorrow. Whoops. Gee, very nearly, <laughs> very nearly made a terrible mistake. His mind's probably a blank at the moment, you know. He wouldn't really know what's going on. Well, here he is taking the ball, but that was a forward pass that went to him. Yes, the State Bank replay. A good catch from Brasher, too. He had to, had to really lean out for that one. It was well and truly in front of him, but the referee ruled that it was a forward pass. Which should have been a penalty to Canterbury, I thought. He was playing some sort of advantage, but uh, they've pulled down just about 15 metres out. But plenty of pressure now for Balmain as Langmack comes away with it. Binky's got him, so has uh, Brooks. Thomas has dummy half. Here's Alchin, and then Lamb to Gillespie. Defence was up very quickly on Gillespie. Tripped another metre or two. Now it's come. Well, they're keeping it alive somehow with Alchin coming up with it. It's like a hot potato out there, this football. And they're throwing it around. Field goal attempt from Lamb. Comes off a Balmain player. Picked up by Dunn. Six tackle start again. Everything going Canterbury Banks down's way at the minute as Nissen comes onto the football. He's pulled down only five or six metres out from the Balmain line. Thomas goes to dummy half. He comes done. Running very strongly and got to only a metre out. Brandon Lee it was. Lost his headgear. Alchin has it. Across to Lamb. Oh, Lamb's pass has gone astray. And Balmain have knocked it on trying to pick it up. And they'll call it back for the first knock on. Canterbury just for three. We'll make that seven handling errors now to Balmain as Gary Jack can't pick it up. Yeah, the State Bank replay, a badly directed pass there at Jack's shoulder. And they're the most difficult ones to take when you've got to lean back uh, and try to get the ball from behind your shoulder. Not easy at all. That was dreadful. Here's Lamb. Alchem at dummy half has given it away to Langmack. underneath his legs 
and he was called to play it but decided that he'd try to keep it alive somehow so Tunks has been uh, the man penalised for not playing it when he was told to now Gary Jack with the uh, kick for touch and finds it just about uh, right on the halfway mark here's Edwards to Brasher Underneath him. Edwards. Linked up with Benke. Just inside now the Canterbury half. Check the scrums. And uh, the Tigers have a 3 2 advantage there, but a 6 3 advantage in the penalties. Edwards. Looking for touch, and uh, he'll find it. Nice little kick from Sean Edwards. Finds touch about eight metres out. Yeah, well, I'm glad that Sean Edwards is doing something in the way of uh, good football insofar as his kicking is concerned because his general play has been pretty ordinary. He's tried to run and I feel he's taken the wrong option on a few occasions and run into very, very strong defence, which uh, hasn't done him a whole lot of good. Archer works the scrum. And he has it now. Grant Ellis, who's been in the head bin, ready to come back on. So, uh, Tunks will, will be used in a 10-minute stint. Gillespie. The short of the quarter line. And Farrah and Lamb and Manelia. It's 30 metres out now. On the Canterbury line as Alchin beats the first tackle. Ten points to two, this rejuvenated Canterbury side, leading Balmain. Farrah, wrong footed, now he gets the kick in. And I think he may have come off a Balmain hand. So that'll be uh, useful for Canterbury, because I'll get the feed. But, uh, Elias has been called out. Benny Elias must be persistently doing something in the set scrum that the referee honestly doesn't want to know about and wants him to desist straight away. Benny tried to argue the toss but was shut up. So uh, I think the referee won that round. Well, and Ryan, the Balmain coach, must be a little concerned at the moment. Particularly concerned about that aspect of the Balmain play. 11 missed tackles compared to five from Canterbury. Further penalty to Canterbury. Again, Balmain inside the five metres. Surinan shakes his head, but uh, again, you can't argue that one. So Farrah, again, will kick for touch. Well, there's the usual discussion, but again, it's, it's uh, way beyond Lamb's capabilities, I think. You'd have to extend, really belt the ball, and if you do that, you'd generally hook it kick for touch too. Finds it only about 15 metres out. As Thomas with the restart gives it away to Alchin. Back to Thomas. A set move now as Langmack rang on to the football but he's missed it. His pass was meant for Nissen and Balmain have come up with it via Sirenen. So a set move that went wrong. Maybe it's the first thing that did go wrong for Canterbury today. Podgy links up with Brasher. Then out to O'Brien. Well, young Brasher did well to offload the pass then to O'Brien. That was a nice bit of football. I'm glad I'm able to say something good about him. He's had a pretty nervous start to the match. Pierce, just on the quarter line. Clark. Here's Edwards. That's a solid hit. Hey, hey. Here's Jerry Thomas again. Now Elias. Back for Pierce. Back for Elias and then to Hardwick. He shaped a kick. Ben kick's got it. And then out to Gartner. That was passed back inside. He's come off to a Canterbury player. And it was Langmack who was there to fall on it. Now Alton. The wrong move on there. Thought he could get down that blind side. He couldn't. 
something. Edwards has it. This is Poggi. Oh, nice. Links up with Siren. Can't get out of that tackle. Siren, he's able to offload it back for Clark. He's going out to Brasher. Brasher steps nicely off two feet then, off the right, then the left. Up to the quarter line. Now it's back for Edwards. As the half-time siren sounds, Benke puts his little kick through. Thorns come back for it to retrieve. Oh, he's missed it. Now he's got it. Gardner was flying through after that. But that is the half-time score with Canterbury 10 leading Balmain 2. As the players trace off with that uh, half-time scoreline, the turning point came in the 17th minute when a beautiful try was scored by Terry Lamb. Now he's laying back. Running off him was Gillespie. He's running with plenty of enthusiasm today. And got the pass away to Terry Lamb. Lamb's going for the corner. Jack's getting to him, but he beats Jack and scores. Ten points to two. Canterbury lead Balmain as we get set for this second half of the State Bank big game. There's a one change, I understand, in the Balmain lineup, Bill Anderson. There is a side. Kevin Hardwick isn't on the field, but he's been replaced by Bill Rule, who's quite a good worker in the forwards. No changes to Canterbury Banks down. And you'll find that the Bulldogs will continue to look to, to spread the ball early in this half and then hit Balmain up the centre. Good on you, Bill. Set for the start of the second half. I trust you're enjoying it, especially all the mothers watching tonight. I hope you've had a very, very happy Mother's Day. And I know if you're a Canterbury supporter, you'll be a, a happy mum at the minute. And Balmain bring it back. Really, from that, what is like a swamp down there. It's a morass. It's so Absolutely it's a morass. Now here's Rule. Check those first ta tackle counts for you. For Canterbury, 68 tackles. Lee and Dunn the best. Balmain have had to make 109 tackles in that first half. Brooks and Siren are the best of those. That's a fair workload for the Balmain side in that first half. Elias keeping it alive, and Clark's made a mess of it. Canterbury only get come up with it. They have. Elia was able to fall on the football, so immediately Canterbury put Balmain under pressure as Raymond got to the 10 metre mark before he's pulled out. Thomas a dummy half. Cross it goes to Lee. This is the area that. Uh, Langmac loves to work and he'll probably call for it on the blind side. That's where it's coming now. This is Langmac. A short ball was there for Gillespie. He's pulled down 10 metres out. Thomas dummy half. And away it goes to Ellis. Last tackle now signal against the Canterbury side. Langmac standing on the open side. Alchin has it. Langmack's cut out to a beautiful pickup from Terry Lamb. His pass has come back for Alchin. He keeps it alive with a pass back to Dunn. Off the goalpost, straight into Gary Jack's hands. And Jack will play just eight metres out from his own line. It was a pretty costly mistake of Clark's there to uh, fumble the ball and give it back to Canterbury, and they were able to put him under an enormous amount of pressure, as you've seen. And now they're still under pressure while they're close to their line. So I think they ought to get the hell out of there and get the ball down the other end of the field with a decent kick. Here's Pierce. Thomas is there, bringing it away to Benke. Just short of the quarter line. Down the blind side goes the old fellow Gardner. Now Elias sending it down for Henry Raymond. Raymond running very strong. Brian was there to bring him down, so was young Brasher. And he's made a little mistake in the play of the ball. Yes, just a little tiny one. Henry Raymond, who's been going pretty well for the uh, Canterbury Banks down side. A very aggressive runner. Sean Edwards working the scrum. Now Becky. 
Gucci. And now Gartner running around Gartner was Gary Jack. Still making some meters as he falls to the ground. Hobgy goes to dummy half. Back for Edwards. Now Elias. Brooks. Quickly onto O'Brien. Got around Raymond. O'Brien still running strongly. Defense closes in on him now on the quarter line. Thomas it was who brought him down, but he did beat Henry Raymond pretty well. Here's Edwards. Now Surinan. Charging ahead Surinan. Defense was too good though. Just inside the Canterbury quarter. Edwards found Wayne Pierce lurking out wide. Pierce, Pierce has gone straight through a little gap. Got a short pass away to Podgy, which has gone astray. And he's complaining that he was that, that Podgy was tackled without the ball. We'll check this. Yes, watch him here. This was a beautiful run by Wayne Pierce, and there was Podgy patently tackled without the football. And uh, I think somebody's getting some time on the bit. Legitimate complaint because Podgy was certainly held and Langmack it is who's going to spend some time in the sin bin. Yes, you don't often see Wayne Pierce, uh, who's a very good representative of uh, Balmain and rugby league. You don't often see him appearing in the referee for anything, not even for mercy at times, but uh, he appealed then and they got the benefit of it too. So Elias is going to take a tap restart. 15 metres out. Clark takes it up. The 10 metre mark you see there. Balmain really desperate to score now as Pobgy got through one and got to about two metres from the line. Elias dummy half pointing to the right. It's going that way. Clark quick hands on the Brooks. And Brooks has given it away to Benke. Benke crawls on his hands and knees. Got to about a metre out. Plays it. Got it back quickly now to Elias. Now Surinan. Surinan standing flat. Can't offload. Counter defence got to him pretty well. Now Sean Edwards. Out now for young Brasher. But Elias, uh, Elia at least, that caught him, put him down. Pierce to Elias. The midfield bomb. It's going to be too big. Nissen was back there, but he may well have been over the uh, dead ball line. Yes, I think the referee... No, well, no, he stood on the line, which is out, of course. That's... Uh, the decision is to bring the ball back to the quarter line for a quarter line block. So I think the referee ruled that because he had his foot on the line, that automatically meant he was out. Now, Raymond Lee. Incidentally, I, I don't altogether agree with Balmain's tactics of constantly cutting out somebody in the back line. I think that's defeating its own purpose at the moment. These long passes, they're, they're up there hanging around in the air waiting to be intercepted. Yeah, they've done that quite a few times. Gillespie. Edwards is probably the chief offender in there. Oh, yes, he's done it half a dozen times in the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes of the game. English style football. Speaking of Englishmen, all eyes out at Arana Park, Campbelltown for Elry Hanley's debut for West today. We'll have some highlights of that game for you at the end of this program. Gary Jack was on his own quarter line. He made about five metres before the defence got to him. It was Lee who pulled him down. Now Pop G. Leap two tackles, Podgy. Here's it, which this time was a ball that looked to be four, and it was, it's been ruled that way. Judge in at the moment. Canterbury's Brandon Lee's the uh, recipient of some words from uh, Annesley. No further action. And a scrum down 32 metres out from the Balmain line. Worked by Alchin. And here's Terry Lamb on the Barrett. His legs taken from under him. We'll wake up with a sore head tomorrow after that one. That was a hell of a clout. Warwick, uh, Wayne Pierce there came in very hard. You'll see this on the ground as he falls. Wayne Pierce comes in because there's no hand upon him at the moment. He's still likely to get up and and uh, go ahead. Here comes Wayne Pierce, like a projectile, bang, straight in. So the Bulldogs now on the Balmain quarter line. Gillespie bounced off one, got it back to Aurelia. Defence gets to him quite easily. Alchin, now Lamb, and then out to Ellis. Pierce was around his ankles. Terry Lamb again tries a field goal. He's pushed it to the right. Over the dead ball line. 
Canterbury still lead 10 points to 2. That was the score at half time. No change here. And Elias will take the uh, tap restart on his own 22. His rule. Second half replacement on this Balmain side. Elias back for Brescia. Canterbury up inside the five metres. So Balmain take a quick kick for a touch. Well, Balmain have got about 31 minutes to get back into this game. I agree with them taking everything quickly now. They've got no time to waste. Well, you say an urgent telephone call there for Peter Tunks as Langmack comes back from the sin bin. I wonder what the message was for Tunks. Edwards plays it. Rule is dummy half. Now Brooks bounces off one and takes it back inside the corner. The word we have is that Ellis may well be the player who will be replaced. Penalty's gone to Balmain. Well, the referee's claiming that uh, he was tackled without the ball. And we'll see it on the replay. Well, he's, uh, they really have taken him out of the play, haven't they? Brandon Lee's the man who was uh, in part responsible for that. Now the question arises, do they take the penalty at this stage? Well, I think with 29 minutes and the kick in a very adjacent position, it would be foolhardy not to. So uh, that's what they're going to do, I think, yes. Grant Ellis uh, walks off and Peter Tunks back from the bench. He's on, giving the orders. I guess he'll take over the captaincy again. So I'm here, I'm the talker, listen to me. Who's going to argue? Not me. <laughs> David Brooks, only one from three, but this is quite an easy kick for him. It's uh, just about in line with the left hand upright. And you can see there it's only about uh, well, 18, 19 metres out. And he makes no mistake with it, as you would expect. So Balmain keep in the game, it's Canterbury 10, Balmain 4, 6 the difference. Well, there's a nasty mouth or jaw injury for Bill Rule. And uh, we're showing a little concern for him. Gary McFarlane is the player who's coming on, yes. Now O'Brien's come up with it. from Townsville. We go to Paradise. Even if it is only for 24 hours. Sirenin. Well, we lost the football, Sirenin. 
Graham has been able to pick it up. Yes, it's not much good coming on the burst and making a bust and then losing the ball at the end of it. It's uh, all sort of a non-event in that case. receiver again and Gillespie back for Algin. Gillespie's passed the ball to, today more in this one match than I've seen in all the other football games he's played this year. Now Tunks straight ahead. Whee! Strong, solid run from Tunks. Got to the quarter line. Last tackle now for Canterbury. And he's holding his mouth. Not very impressed with that, Tunks. Lamb in the in goal area now, Gary Jack as you like, saw who was coming, had plenty of time and kicked it dead. Yes, there, he was very really calm about this. He knew that he had the last option of taking the ball over the sideline or the dead ball line with the foot. But uh, he wanted to just see whether it had rolled through that muck and morass in the end goal area that looked quite nice as we looked down on it. But believe me, when you get up close to it, it's really terrible stuff. It's about a foot long, the grass there. Change in the Canterbury side, Bill. Yes, there is. Darren Curry's gone on in number 40. He's replaced Henry Raymond, who was on the wing. Now, that looks like it's forced a few positional changes. I believe that Alchin would have gone back to full-back, and then they'd have shuffled things in closer. It's a story as far as Balmain's concerned, Bill. They've just got to get some uh, movement down the other end of the field. Yeah, they're finding it hard to break this uh, this Canterbury defence. There just isn't that variety. They're looking for a brilliant individual performance. Gary Jack could provide that, but he's, of course, this is only his second game back from quite a severe uh, arm injury. Sean Edwards is the man. You know, he's played football over in England right up to last week. He's just got to uh, roll his sleeves up and do a bit more. Here's Terry Lamb again involved as Edwards picks up that little kick. They're only 12 metres out from the Balmain line. This is not the end of the field that the Tigers need to be. And Clark. I noticed that Nissan has gone to the wing. Alchim has gone to fullback in the Canterbury side. Right on the Balmain quarter. Edwards. Be. Come very dark at the Belmore Sports Ground as Elias looks for touch, puts it over Alchin's head. Alchin did well to get in between the ball and the touch line to uh, prevent it going over the line. Now Elias chasing Alchin has missed him, and Alchin runs into the uh, formidable size of, of Siren and Big Siren throws him to the ground. David and Goliath are there. Now Tunks gets into the action. He's just trying to do the same to me. <laughs> it was Brooks underneath Tunks. Dunn takes it up. Pierce has got him. Penalty goes to Canterbury. Wayne Pierce questions. that one I thought a little bit rough the referee sometimes sees things slightly different than what we do I don't think the ball was knocked out of the Canterbury players hand by a Balmain player I think they can feel a little bit aggrieved about that decision particularly with 15 minutes to go on them trailing by six points now here's uh, Robert Thorne from Dummy Half. Now out wide, the Canterbury side with Farrah getting the ball back inside for Lamb. Now Canterbury are back inside the Balmain quarter. He's done. He's had an improved performance today too. Done. He's been very much a workhorse. 12 metres out now as Lane Mack puts a little kick through in the end goal area but it's just a little too strong and has gone over the uh, touching goal line. Last tackle now. Probably a little far out for them at the minute. And the land will just have a little kick through. He's running to the back of Syrian and we sort of knock him over. Well, the referee is uh, not going to take any action. The referee was very quick to observe that and uh, he, he rubbed his arms uh, across his chest uh, and a race
face that was the thought that there could be anything wrong with it. I think Lamb continued his run straight ahead. Surinam turned his back. So the Tigers are getting in their own corner and finding it very difficult to get out of there. Here comes Surinam. And the defence swarms in on him and the crowd love it. <laughs> well, the Canterbury crowd love it anyway. Here's Elias. From dummy half, he's put this kick through. Lamb is there to retrieve, as always. Gee, Terry Lamb is everywhere, isn't he? Yes, he's uh, had a first-class game today. He and Gillespie are the two that have impressed me very much today. Canterbury side, uh, the Canterbury fans at least come alive. Right on the halfway mark now. Caught by Pierce. players are getting pretty leg weary now. Yes, I've played consecutive games a few times in my life and it doesn't, I can promise you, it doesn't, uh, not a great enjoyment the last 20 minutes of the second game. Last tackle against Canterbury as Lamb puts it straight down uh, Ryan's throat. Did very well to evade the first attempt by Nissen, but uh, he came in again and O'Brien will play just outside the Balmain quarter. Here's Brasher. Runs straight into Brandon Lee. Now Binky. Tunks has got him. Clark. They're only about eight metres from the halfway mark now. Edwards and Binky. Now Pierce out there. And then on to Podgy. But gee, this Canterbury defence is very good. Now Edwards. And picked up by Curry. And Curry has sliced his way right through. Caught by Edwards, 32 metres out. Still making progress now as he played it forward. He's reached the quarter line. Alchin inside pass for Tunks. Champ Bulldogs goes up around the Belmore Sports Ground. Wayne Mack got it back for Alchin. He very nearly slipped through too. He's still going. Good run from Alchin. Back inside the Balmain quarter. Down the blind side is Lamb. A pass which has come out for Elia. Elia goes for the corner. Is he going to score? No try. No try. I hate to have to be the touch judge to rule on these sort of things because they're very, very hard. And uh, you see Elia coming straight and hard. Does he get the ball down? Well, it's so close, I don't know. Oh, jeez. Terribly close, terribly close. The tackle there was great. Edwards came across very well, but, oh, gee, that's a close decision. I wouldn't like to call it. I've had the benefit of two replays. That's a real tough call. You wouldn't argue whichever way you touch judgment, would you? No, either way. That was a, we'll say it was a damn good decision. <laughs> <laughs> Again, in goal, judges. Yes, in goal. Would they be able to give the uh, referee an assist in that situation? Now Elias sends Alchim, oh that, that kick might be, no it's not, it's pulling up and gone the wrong way now, Alchim finally gets to it. Got away from Elias, he's been able to link up with Robin Thorne, but uh, Sirenen is there to stop him. But now they're back in the Canterbury quarter and this is the first time that Balmain have been down this end of the field for quite some time. Can they get possession down this end of the field? That's what they need. It's converted try the difference in this game. Just 10 points to four. Canterbury lead. We're in the last five minutes of play. It is essential that Balmain get the football down this end of the field. They might get it now. They have. Sirenen has given it away to Elias. Quickly on to now Binky. Got it away to Pudgy. Pudgy looks for an inside pass. But it falls down there. Oh, desperation stuff now for Canterbury. Right in the slot. Gartner goes to dummy half. It's come back for Elias. Now Edwards. Back the same way. Only about 12 or 13 metres out from the Canterbury line. Elias goes to dummy half. Now it's with Pierce. And then on to Jack. Back from 
Pierce and then on the Surinan across to Edwards. Again, that cutout pass takes one little hop before I think it was Beaky picked it up. It is Beaky underneath that. So Gartner dummy half. Now back to Elias inside pass. Defence moves in quickly. is pulled down, about 11 metres out, it's the last tackle, the kick could go up here, there'll be real pressure, Brooks puts the kick through, it's loose but Lamb is there I think first of all to save for Canterbury. The charge of the light brigade here is the little kick was put through by Brooks, he has scored off one of these earlier this season and uh, the race is on but clearly the Canterbury backs down by against their first, that would, about that. It would have given the uh, Brooks a hell of a conversion attempt from the sideline too. They need to score near the post. <laughs> well, it's Terry Lamb who's saying the race seems to be in the right place at the right time. I don't know that there's a great deal Balmain can do. I believe that was the last throw on the dice for them, really considering the players that they've got and everything at Canterbury. I think Canterbury have just been a little bit too desperate. Here's Brasher. He's caught just outside the Canterbury quarter. There's about two minutes of play remaining. And a scoreline of 10 4. But Balmain now are inside the quarter again as Beckick serves it up. A little bit more determination in running than that. They, he sold Brooks a dump there. There was nothing else that he could do. Got to run onto this football. Clark. Trap for Brasher. Brasher thought he saw a little gap and he very nearly got through. He's only about 13 metres out. Edwards from dummy half. Straight across field. Links up with Pierce. He got a back for Edwards. The long flop out through the backs. Have come out the Ponzi. He in turn has given it to uh, Gartner it is. Now Elias. Pressure now as this kick hangs in. Oh, it's too big. Way too big this kick for Elias. Over the dead ball line. And if it wasn't the last throw of the dice, when Bill said, it sure is now. Yes, Canterbury that's... supporters here. And Canterbury taking their time for the restart. Who can blame them? Who can blame them? They're entitled to... Uh, they played good football today to get themselves into this position. It's been a, a first-class game of rugby league to watch. They might have been a little bit uh, pedestrian. They've uh, got some players out too. They've got a little few problems at the moment. Well, Bowman are going to get the pick. Well, here's the, definitely the last throw of the dice. That was Gillespie being penalised there. And here's the Balmain last throw of the dice. Right on the quarter line. Got a minute of play remaining. And Edwards links up with Sirenen. The big palm off from Siro. Bell pulled out now about 18 metres out. Elias goes to dummy half. Edwards and quick hands to Pierce. Pierce steps off the right foot. Defense is there with him now. About 13 metres out from the Canterbury line. Edwards. Brasher tries to thread his way through. But the defense has him 11 metres out from the Canterbury line. Clark's made a mess of it. Canterbury come up with it by Tugs. That'll be the ball game. slowly gets to his feet the siren sounds and it's all over here at the Belmore Sports Ground Canterbury Banks South have won and a well deserved victory to the Bulldogs well 10 points to 4 Canterbury have done this it's been a very hard very entertaining game well played Canterbury Lamb and Elia scored the tries and Lamb kicked one goal that's their 10 points Balmain 4 Brooks came up with 2 penalty goals and the crowd are showing their appreciation now. They've swarmed onto the field.